Hey moms, welcome to the Gather Moms podcast. My name is Kate. And I'm Rebecca. We've created this space just for you because we're both moms and we get you. Yes, we believe there truly ain't no hood like the motherhood and we need to be in this together. We also believe we can't mom well without Jesus. So you're going to hear us talk about him too. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Gather Moms and make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. All right, mamas, let's jump in. Hey moms, we're so excited you're joining us today for episode 47 of the Gather Moms podcast and we have got the best guest today. You guys are going to love her. It's Jada Edwards. She is amazing. She lives in the Dallas area and she is the creative arts director at her church, One Community Church. She's a pastor's wife. She has two kiddos and she is all around an amazing teacher and we had the best conversation with her. We're so excited we got to have her on the podcast because she is joining us for the mom event October 22nd and 23rd at Lake Point Church. You guys are going to love her. You get to know her here on the podcast. And then if you come to the event, you get to see her in person. That's right. So go register today. It's lakepoint.church slash mom. And let's hear our conversation with Jada Edwards. Hey, Jada. My goodness, we are so excited to have you with us. And we are so thankful. We were just talking to you a little bit before getting on recording about how excited we are to have you at the mom event. Um, October 22nd in Rockwell, Texas at Lake Point Church. And we are just thrilled that we have this chance for our our moms, our gather moms, to get to know you a little bit before then. Cool. I'm excited. Let's go. We want to know a little bit about what momming looks like for you because we know you're a mom of two. (laughs) So we want to know their names, their ages. And then also we know that you're a pastor's wife and you work at your church. So tell us a little bit about what you do um, besides momming. Yeah. Yeah, so my little ones are four and eight. Um, my four-year-old is Chloe. She is the spice of life. <laughs> yes. And my eight-year-old is Joa. He is like exudes joy. He's just a walking cloud of hugs and compassion. <laughs> and Love. so um, they they are an interesting pair. And so they are now at the same school. She started pre-K at his school, which is a pre-K through 12 school. And so they're all super getting their sibling on. And it's great because they, awesome. they argue probably 20% of the time. And yes. the rest of the time, they genuinely like each other. So I'm loving this season before it shifts. And listen, um, when you have all your kids in one school, yeah. that's a big deal for it momming. Is. It listen, is. I have three that, kids. That drop-off and pickup is a life changer. three kids and three schools. And Woo! it is not... Fun. So shout Not out fun. to the all kids in one school. Yeah, that's right. And I don't know how long it's going to last, but I'm I'm thankful every week. I'm like, yes, Lord. Another time where we had one location. So, yes, that's a big um, moment. Yeah. yeah. So they're, they're at the same school now. Um, and so as for me, momming, uh, pastor's wife and uh, founder of our church, our church will be celebrating 13 years here oh, this weekend. Congratulations. Our anniversary. Yeah. I planted our church. It didn't feel like 13 years ago, but it, indeed it was. And we kind of started our family late. Uh, I always say the church was my first baby. Aww. So we did that like a solid seven years before kids came along. And wow. so my joke is that we're all, we're like the gray haired kindergarten parents. Cause we, it was like, we were in our late thirties. We're like, Oh, kids. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we need to Listen, it kids. makes you smarter. I'm telling you, you know, the <laughs> stuff now you're like, momming, I got this people. Come on. Well, I, I know for me, this is not everybody's story, but God is sovereign. I know for me and the two that I have and the way it's all working out the chaos of life, I can't imagine doing this in my twenties mm-hmm. for me. Now, for some people, they knock it out the park, but we were so heavy in ministry from day one. I mean, before we got married, we were doing ministry together. So um, I know what the Lord called us to, especially with our church plant, we could not have done what he was asking us to do with little ones, you know? So I tell people all the time when they're in ministry and I'm like, if you got little ones, you need to change the bar. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, yes. it changes the game. And so for us to not have that and be up all night and go everywhere and mm-hmm. do all these things. And uh, that was us for a solid seven years. And then both of my kids are adopted. So then we adopted my son. I didn't know uh, that. 20, uh-huh. Adopted him in 2013. And We're really debating on adopting a second, um, but quite honestly, it wasn't even a godly decision. We were just like, this child is such an extrovert. Oh, my God, he loves people. He needs somebody to play with. This is is not a good trajectory. I cannot entertain him for the next 18 years. So Listen, 
had my daughter been first, she would, she's a perfect only child. She's an ideal only child. She sits in a corner and she colors and all that kind of stuff. Super introspective and all that. But my son, I was like, mm-mm. <laughs> yes, so, he needs a friend. <laughs> he needs a friend. Uh-huh. So, so uh, we adopted uh, Chloe 2016. And it's a funny thing because in August, I remember we had just done our paperwork and all this stuff the second time. My son was three and I was picking him up from uh, his little school. And he goes, mommy. I said, yeah, babe. He's like, I have a sister. I was like, what? I mean, we had just turned in the paperwork. We didn't know. We didn't specify gender or anything. And I said, okay, where is she? And he's like, with Jesus, you know, oh. in his little three-year-old way, playing with his toy. And I was like, I don't know what just happened. And so fast forward a few months in November, he's in children's church at our church and he comes home. They're supposed to draw this little portrait of their family for Thanksgiving. And there's four people. I was like, who is this person? He was like, that's my baby sister. And he's looking at me like, We've already talked about a little yes. prophet. And I yes. was like, where is she? He was like, with Jesus. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so, so in uh, the 1st of December, um, I got a call that a, a young woman had chosen to, to give her, give her child for adoption and had selected us as the parents and all that stuff. And this was about three or four weeks after that second time he said that. And I called us. I was like, oh my God, it's a girl. Oh my. I mean, that's amazing. Thing. Totally, totally a God thing. And so you yes, said, Joa, been, what else are you dreaming about? Joa, tell me, this, you got something tell else? Your dreams and visions. Do you, you have know? a vacation to Hawaii in that dream? <laughs> you got it? He is. Yeah. So they are, those are my two little peas. And, um, uh, spending that time splitting that, not splitting that, but sharing that with, with church life is a challenge. And yeah, you know, we have help. It takes a village. Mm-hmm. You know, there's yeah. no shame in that. We mm-hmm. have lots of help. And so Good. Uh, what I do at our church too is, I mean, I oversee our creative ministry. So I oversee our worship, our band, our choirs, our drama team, our dance team, wow. all the creative ministries for all of our locations come under my, my team. Cause I love that stuff. Wow. Um, and then I teach twice a month for our women's Bible study and sometimes on the weekends. So my hands are full, but I like kind of being in a lot of those things. And so it's just worked out, you know, and um, I'm hoping that our kids are on a path where they like church and they choose church and they're not feeling like they had, you know, like some any kind of heaviness, bitterness, whatever. They're not there all the time. They're not there most of the time when I'm there. Yeah. It's just on the weekends. They just go to church Mm -hmm. and like every other kid and they come home. And so um, we try really hard to, make the crazy, you know, manageable. Yes. I love that. We're both pastor's wives too. Yes. And that's something we've had to balance too, is we want our kids to love church. Yeah. And, you know, so you have to get creative and pay attention and make sure that they are enjoying it. And when it starts to become too much, okay, how do we, how do we. Listen, I made my son go last night. He didn't want to go. I said, we going. So (laughs) I did it. I said, get out of the car. We're going. So yeah. sometimes you got to. Yeah. 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 Sometimes you have to. Like this year, the first year my son wasn't in Awana. And so because we do our Awana on Wednesday nights. Yeah. My little one, I put her in Awana. It's good for her. And, and you know, her schedule is less demanding. At this point, my oldest between football and soccer and all this stuff during the week. And he's in a Christian academy. Praise God. We're blessed for that. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he's good right now in scripture memorization. So I'm just like, it's another thing to another yes. book, another thing to memorize, another thing to learn. Yes. And I'm like, yeah, no. Just We're let that so one I go. have someone that can pick him up, get him to practices if it's a Bible study night where I'm teaching, and then get him in the bed. Yeah, because, I love that. Yeah. So he was like, I'm not doing a wanna. I said, <laughs> no. He was like, I said, are you sad? He was like, no. Okay. 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 Good. Yep. Just wanted to ask the question. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, said, I didn't. I didn't think you'd be sad because it's work. You know. It's yeah. A lot it's of work. work. So, yeah. So that was the first year we've done that. So I think we just kind of, you know, you're just kind of making constant decisions. It may change yes. next year, but yes. Um, I think it's a constant assessment of what's healthy. Yeah. What's moving us toward our goal. Our goal is for him, obviously to love the Lord, know scripture. Okay. If he's getting that in three other areas of life, do we need to really add this thing so that everybody's like, Oh, the pastor's kids are in a want I don't care. So good for so you. It, it's just like There's so you, much no. freedom for so many moms out yeah. there going score. Mm-hmm. Good for you. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So my four-year-old goes and, and actually after this morning, waking her up, because it gets out at 8 30. She's usually in bed close to 8 30. So by the time she's home from church and bathed and all that, it's more like 9 30. Yeah. And waking her up this morning, I had tough. to pray. I was like, Jesus. 
Because this morning, we almost broke up. I was like, girl. <laughs> yes, I know those not, mornings. Like, that extra hour did was did not sit well with her morning spirit. And yeah. so I, I'm that is that is under evaluation right now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's good. Under evaluation. I like that. It is. Because don't you feel it like is. as moms a lot of times like, you know, there are certain things that you sign up for and you feel like you gotta tell your kids, okay, we we are doing this, we finished what we started. And there are other things where you're like, mm, mm, let's quit. We need to <laughs> quit this. This is That's, not working. Why did we start this? Yeah. 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 That's mm-hmm. good. Okay, so we wanted to talk to you about this season on the Gather Moms podcast. We're talking about more. And that really came from the spirit of knowing that our moms want more. They want more than just like trying to get by every day and, Mm -hmm. you know, barely making it work and falling into the bed exhausted and wondering what they did all day. You know, we want more as moms. We want our days to matter. We want it to count. Mm -hmm. And so... I just, just to start off, just kind of on a fun thing, what do you, Jada, as a mom, want more of? Probably more alone time. Like, that's and not, not in the bathroom? Not, oh, the fingers under the mm-hmm. mom. Mm-hmm. Why are you brushing my body? My gosh, give me a minute. <laughs> um, please. It takes longer as we get older. Give me an extra minute, okay? Please. And now we have a new code word when I'm heading into my bedroom. If I go privacy, like oh. that, means, that means don't trail, don't trail behind me and into the bathroom. And Good for if you. I hear them at the door, so I haven't started making them knock yet on our bedroom door, but I'll say that's our that's our code word. And now my son's getting older; he thinks he got private parts. I'm like, well, you like privacy. <laughs> Oh, everybody likes privacy, you know, so he doesn't want Chloe busting in the bathroom when he's in the shower now. Yeah. I said, what's your word? He's like, privacy, please. Okay. So then we know back out of everybody's space. And so uh, what I probably want more of is uh, is alone time. And I think just thinking time, not even necessarily to rest, but I feel like I just don't have as much time to dream or to wander, like my mind to wander. You know what I'm saying? And that healthy kind of. I don't know, life assessment. What am I doing next? God, what do you have on my heart? I feel sometimes you're just in the execution. You're just getting through the day and getting through the weekend and you don't really have time to, to just dream or to yeah. let your mind wander, you know? I and love that. I think I, I think I missed that time a bit too. And I'm a little bit of a creative, so too much routine and mm-hmm. schedule kind of makes me Yeah, I was listening to a podcast yesterday and he was talking about how as a creative, you need those moments of like riding a bike or hiking or walking where your mind really is free to dream. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes Mm -hmm. when we're stuck in that, like I got 30 minutes to dream, it's not coming. I'm got I'm getting nothing. And so I think Mm -hmm. as moms, you know, to go for a walk or to have a bike ride by myself, that's kind of a big deal. I got to find people to watch and I got to make sure everybody's fed. And so Mm -hmm. I agree with you some alone time there just to dream that would be awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One thing I've started doing is now, and I did it a lot better before the pandemic, but now things are opening up a little more and hours are getting a little longer back to normal. If my husband's home that evening, like not at a meeting, you know, this is the other thing about being a pastor. Wife. I'm trying to explain to people why somebody's always at my house helping with my kids. Cause I'm like, you're really single parenting a mm-hmm. lot. So I was mm-hmm. like, usually if I'm gone, he's gone. We're at the same place. We're, doing, we're, we're That's both right. gone together, you know? That's right. Um, so there, it's not, it's not like some people like oh, I trade off, I hand off. I'm like, no, we're both not. <laughs> so, but, but I've started doing since their bedtime is like eight, eight, eight thirty somewhere in there. I'll pick nights where I'm like, oh, okay, I know this place is open, like a late place, you know? Mm, and yes. I'll be like, Hey, I'm going to such and such yes. restaurant, coffee shop, whatever near the house. They close at 10 or they close at 11 yeah. and I will forego the sleep for that hour and a half to sit there and one of my favorite phrases in the world is when I go to a restaurant and they say, how many? And I say one. Oh, that's good. Really? That's good. Like the heavens open. <laughs> yes. And so yes. I can tell when, is it, when they're younger people, they're like, it's just you. Yes. <laughs> and I'm excited about it. Thank you very much. I'm very excited. I am my favorite person. We're going to mm-hmm. agree on what we want to eat mm-hmm. and have a great conversation. I don't have it's to share be- with nobody. It's all it's mine. Be wonderful. There'll be no argument. We'll be ready to go at the same time. It's going to all work out. So I was like, Mm-mm. so I do that sometimes, you know, and I'll just take that extra hour and a half um, and just go sit or I'll do my target runs, my grocery store runs, but let them go to sleep. And I take the hour and a half to not just go through my list, but to push that buggy up and down every aisle, yes. you know, and it is just a kind of 
a, just a time. Yeah. And um, I'm not rushed because everybody's in the bed and I'm like, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Be Fine. present in the moment. Just kind of go and flow with the moment where you're not checking something off a to-do list, but you're just like here. I'm here. Yeah. 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 And sometimes it's it, little things and it depends. Everybody recharges differently. But I, I try to tell people, you're not going to always have a week to take a vacation, you know, or a day to go to the spa. So some of it is asking the Lord, okay, how do I make the most of this hour? You yeah. know, if nothing comes to my mind, that's fine. I still, it was still a worthy investment. How do I make the most of this 30 minutes? You know, um, sometimes I co- if I'm coming home and I don't have the kids, they're already home or someone's bringing them home. I turn off the car and before I let the garage door down, I just sit there for a lot five, five minutes. Sometimes I set my timer sometimes for 10 minutes yeah. turn off the radio and I just sit there. How am I feeling? What do we need to get done tonight? What do we not need to get done? Okay, that can wait. Is it? I mean, it's just kind of a that is a good word. Yes, yes, it and it's, it's so quick in. just uh-huh. to stop for five seven minutes. Okay, you know, and sometimes my husband will open the garage door and he'll close it back. I'm like, yes, I'm here. <laughs> Give yes. me a minute, because you know make... when you open that door, you know, yeah, it's on. What's it's on. waiting for you? Right. And so I I just think it's it's important and little things like not going to the self checkout. It's okay. I'm glad Target has it, but I want the long line sometimes. And you know what? What does a magazine look like? Let me pick up this magazine. It's fine. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have time today. Take your time. And I'm just <laughs> flipping through the thing. I'm like, I don't have to always choose the fastest, most efficient path. And sometimes that gives me a sense of control over my pace where it feels like I'm living life as opposed to it's pushing me to the next thing, if that makes sense. Oh, so, I love that. That's so Sometimes good. you can just That's find good. little ways to be like, I'm going to regain control here. <laughs> yes. 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 I love that. That's good, Jada. That I think that's going to be a helpful word for some mama. It is for Well, me. and thinking about our moms, because our audience is mamas, and they're all in that busy season, too, of living life and trying to get the to-do list done. And I love what you had to say about just kind of that self-check-in, you know, just mm-hmm. where am I at right now and what do I have to do? What would you say you want more of for the moms? Because I know you've got moms in your ministry. You've got moms in mm-hmm. your church. You've got mom friends. What would you say you want more of for them? I would say I would want more soul care. Mm -hmm. And I say that very specifically because self-care is kind of a thing right now. And self-care is important. Um, Sometimes it can get a bit Um, self-centered. It's not about cutting people out of your life. And, you know, I'm saying no to everything so I can love on me. And that's fine. You're valued in the Lord. You don't need to. I mean, it's not just that. Self-care to me is an aspect of soul care. And so it's not, it's not the end all be all. So I think we have to be careful with that. It's important, but it also can feed our self-centeredness as well. Um, Because we have seasons where we're giving, we're just giving a lot and that's okay. There's a season, there's seasons for that. And so anyway, soul care, I say, because I do think that the, the spiritual connection, how mom, how moms, especially young moms find time, find unhurried time with God, um, sit with God's word, have their own personal worship, ask God what he has for them that day. All of that, that soul kind of Holy spirit, Jesus, that check in, I think we're missing. And Mm -hmm. I think we find ourselves empty because if your self-care is top notch and your soul care is not, you're going to still be empty. That's right. And so if you got your pedicure and you relax today and today's a good day, but God wasn't invited in or centered in any of that, then it just is not satisfying. That's right. And so sometimes I, I, it's great to go get a pedicure, but what am I listening to while I'm there? What am I thinking about while I'm there? I'm usually in there with my iPad and my journal and not work. I'm just thinking and listening and okay, God, what, what do you want this week to look like or this month or this season? So I just think that very often we're kind of still surviving on the last good word (laughs) that we heard or happened to come our way, as opposed to this intentional, I still need to feed on God's word. Like I still need time with God. And so I just think soul care is probably a huge one for a lot of us. I love that because that's where the true restoration is, right? A pedicure Mm -hmm. can't restore me. A trip to Target can't restore me. It can give me a momentary little dopamine boost, but it's Mm -hmm. not what's going to make a difference for when I do come home and I find out that my kid is struggling with anxiety Mm -hmm. or I come home Mm -hmm. and I find out my husband has lost his job. That pedicure is not going to do it Mm -hmm. for me. It has to be that truly transformation that comes from being 
from living through the spirit, from being in touch with Jesus, from reading the word of God, that that you are restored and refreshed. So when those things come that are hard on your soul, your soul mm-hmm. is ready to bear those. Mm-hmm. Well, oh, I yeah. think I think too. It's hard. It was it was been hard for me as a mom to find the window of soul care, because mm-hmm. I feel like as a mom, part of your day is already decided for you. Like once yes. those babies are awake, yeah. And so I think one of the hard parts of momming is figuring out what's my window of soul care and how do I mm-hmm. take advantage of that and mm-hmm. not miss it. Because I find myself if I miss my window of soul care, I don't get another window mm. till right. like ten p.m. Yeah. And by that time. I've already done the word, said the words, been upset, <laughs> yeah. screamed, hollered. That's just a time of forgiveness and repentance. Yes, yes. <laughs> I got I to gotta confess my sins before the Lord Sorry, before I go Lord. to sleep. Yes. <laughs> so what would you say to that? What would you say to, to, you said young moms, I'm 40s, you know, middle moms. How do we find that window of soul care and how do we take advantage of it? Yeah. So my answer probably is not going to sit well with the highly structured folks that like that, you know, same devotional time every morning, excuse me, because I, now my personality lends itself to being a bit scattered. Irregularity doesn't bother me, but I I think that regardless of how you're wired and whatever your temperament is, there is a point where you have to just yield to the fact that your life is not going to be very routine, like day-to-day changes. And whether your babies are little bitty babies, or even if they're teenagers, your, your day is your, your weeks and days are changing. And so for me, the window is very much something that I'm often looking at in the evening for the next day, Mm. or I'm even looking at maybe on a Sunday night for the week. What's, what is it going to look like this week? And I think that that has to come with I don't know, a sense of awareness of what, what is my reality today? What's my reality this week? And sometimes it's, it's not, it's not this quiet time with the little coffee mug and the journal and the Instagram photo and quiet time with the Lord. It's not, it's just like, um, there are times where, you know, I will say, uh, I make dinner for the kids and I let them sit at the bar. I might, I might not be eating with them. I let them sit at the bar. And I know at this age, four and eight, I got a solid 10 to 15 minutes where they can just eat, you know? Yeah. And if they fuss, my new, my other new phrase besides privacy is resolve it amongst yourselves. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> and when I, when one. I hear mom, I go, if no one's bleeding, resolve it amongst yourselves. And I'm like, y'all need to work it out. I'm not yes. coming out here to referee every disagreement. And sometimes that 10 minutes, I just go in my room. I go on my patio. I'll be like, I'm on the front porch. <laughs> Good we don't even you. really have a porch. I'm just standing out there. So yeah. I'll just go out there. Um, that's 10 minutes. Um, after they go to bed is a really precious time for me. What I've tried to do is I, I super, I, I work before bedtime to do like a whole bunch of stuff. Like while they're eating dinner, washing dishes, while they're in the bath, everybody's getting their clothes, their clothes laid out, making sure my son's doing his part. So I feel like a win when they go to bed if I don't have a ton of stuff to do after they go to bed, because mm, one of my bad habits was, Oh, now they're in bed. Let me do all the things. That's right. And I'm like, or I start the laundry while they're eating dinner yes. and then put it in the dryer while they're in the bath and <laughs> fold it. If the Lord leads me. And if not, go get your clean clothes out of the dryer. <laughs> That's they're, right. clean. they're there. Okay. Yeah. The dryer, the dryer is a dresser. I'm trying to tell people it's fine. <laughs> there. Get your stuff out of the dryer. So good. Yeah. So I'm like, gosh, I could fold clothes for 30 minutes or <laughs> I could sit here and calm my mind. There you and go. The, the benefit of my kids picking out a folded shirt, it sometimes it just does not compare to what I need for those 30 minutes. There you and I'm go. OK with that. Yes. So I have tried to do a lot more double duty um, during the day before they go to bed so that when they go to bed, that is a big turning point for me in the evening. Yeah. Where I'm like, OK. Yeah. You know, yeah. and now what do I want to do? And now I feel like, oh my gosh, I have like an hour, hour and a half or whatever. And I feel a little more like I have some windows for some time with God. I and I'll that. just say this, regardless of your season, if you ask the Lord, show me when we can meet, I yes. promise you, mm, he will good. show you when my, when my, when mine were little and not sleeping through the night, 
listen, I planned women's conferences at two in the morning because I still knew I was doing women's conference. And I was like, if you, we up, yeah. I'm not going to be up. Like, you know, I'm trying to be awake. If we're up, God, what are we doing with this time? Yes. All right. So, I mean, my friends were like, my team would be like, why are you sending us emails at one? I'm like, because we were up. That's yeah. when we were up. Yeah. So, you know, and then we go to sleep and try to sleep. So, and that didn't happen every time, but I was amazed at how many times God gave me unexpected pockets. And he would say, your day is full, but it's not that full. Yes. Remember, what about this time? Yes. What about this time? Get off Facebook. Yeah. Get off of this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get out of this phone. Stop. Turn yeah. that off. Yeah. Turn off the radio. Just be quiet while we're driving. I love what you're saying because so I've been reading. Um, I'm finally reading The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. Oh, yes. By John Mark Comer. And so much of uh-huh. what you're saying is resonating with things I've just that have just been on my mind with the spirit uh-huh. and, you know, thinking about soul keeping and thinking about those pockets. And, and so much of what you were saying sounds so much like how Jesus did it. You know, uh-huh. Jesus was so much like a mama. I mean, think about uh-huh. it. He's got all these little kids called disciples that he's having to take care of. They're always trying to get into some kind of nonsense, you know. Uh-huh. And I got tickled thinking about Jesus pulling away to a quiet place and saying privacy yes. and then they would show up and they then they would show, show up. up yes and he was like i just left no but. they're peeking their fingers under the door and he says privacy privacy yeah <laughs> yes you i know? think he probably yeah. also said go resolve it amongst yourselves yes he probably said that yeah i feel like that's from the lord and i think that's such a good analogy because those three years of ministry for him are probably like some seasons that many of us are in and so there's a reason why you had he had this whole lifetime before those three years, you know, and and sometimes sometimes our souls were a little bit bankrupt before the kids. Mm. And so the kids just took the last little drop. And so mm. we weren't taking care of our souls anyway. Mm-hmm. And so now we're kind of in this deficit all the time. But I do think there's validity to saying it's OK that I, I don't get up early in the morning right now to be with the Lord. Right now, me and the Lord have a midnight moment, you know, or we have an afternoon moment or oh my gosh, I skipped two days and I didn't have my devotional and I didn't skip through my, I, the Lord still loves me. And there, yes, and right. if you look at, through your life, you'll notice that there were some intense times of pouring and depositing and you didn't know why you had all this sweet time with the Lord. And he's like, girl, cause I know what's coming in your life. And, yeah. and you're not going to be able to feed as much. Some of it, you're going to be living off your reserves and some of it, you're going to be, you know, taking in fresh, fresh word. And so it's a combination of both. And I think being okay with that is really important. Um, and, and saying no, letting go of a lot of stuff. And I don't mean, sometimes we take that extreme. We're like, oh, I'm not doing anything. I'm not serving. I'm not being in engagements. I'm like, yeah, but God still has purpose on your life. So yeah. you can't just check out, but probably if you lift those dishes in the sink, you probably go to bed earlier and, and nobody's being blessed. No eternity is being changed with them dishes being washed and put up. That's right. You, got, you just got to decide what's okay. You yes. know? And you know, my kids laugh because sometimes in the morning, <laughs> Getting their bowl out of the sink yes. with the soap. Listen, I check it first. If it doesn't look that dirty, I just give it right back to them. They don't know. Well, I'm like, this was yesterday's cereal bowl. It's just cereal. That's it's right. the same cereal. They it was know. your bowl. Mm-hmm. I think you used the spoon yesterday. It's already got your germs on it. Here you go. <laughs> That's right. That's good. I like that. Just let go. Let go of the stuff, though. I love that. I think, I think that whole concept of living as a mom who is walking in the spirit and listening to the Lord saying, Hey, I've, I've got this pocket for you right here, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and just being a little more free. I think a lot of us, if you grew up in the Christian tradition, heard that you had to wake up in the morning, have a quiet time Mm -hmm. and, you know, to check the boxes, to be a good Christian. And it gets a lot of us stuck. And really there's even something better that God is offering where it's this living with him, listening to his spirit, walking Mm -hmm. with him so that Mm -hmm. when he does, when you drive through Starbucks and you've got those kids in the back and he says, Hey, go park under a tree. And spend 10 minutes with me, Listen, Mm -hmm. you know, that you Mm -hmm. feel free in that. And it's not, it's not this burden of, oh, I didn't Mm -mm. check the box this morning and do Mm -hmm. my devotional, you know, Mm -hmm. and that just, absolutely, it's so much better. It's so much better to live that way. Oh, I mean, just what you said about the night before for the day, for the next day. I I mean, I've never thought about that. Yeah. That if I know I have a busy morning tomorrow morning, well, let me meet with God tonight. Mm -hmm. So that I can sleep on all the words that he's just poured in my head. So Mm -hmm. I'm ready for the morning. To me, that Mm -hmm. was like light bulb. I was like, yes, I've never thought about that. That's so good. Well, I've been amazed at, and again, I can get a little OCD sometimes. And I've been amazed that when I started letting go of my rest rhythm and my sleep schedule and all these things I thought I had to have, 
what, how God would come in and restore me. And there were times where I was like, I need to get my seven and a half hours, sleep, right? six and a half hours. Okay. Oh my gosh. Finally, tonight is not a three hour night or four hour night. I'm getting some sleep. And I would lay down and I'm serious. I knew I was tired. My body was tired and I'd be laying there just eyes blinking. Like what, what is happening? And the Lord is like, girl, get up. We need to talk. Mm-hmm. And I was like, but, but I need to get these X number of hours of sleep because God, you know, I'm behind on sleep. And, and, and so many times he would show me how that I could give up that little bit of physical sleep because he was about to restore me in a mm-hmm. way that 10 hours of sleep was not going to restore me. Yes. And he didn't do that every night, but it's that openness of God. What does it look like today? Mm-hmm. And there you'd be amazed how many pockets he'll just show you, I think, throughout the course of a day or a week where he's like, we can meet right here. Give us today our daily bread. That That's was right. good. Girl. That was it. Yeah. That was today. it. Yes. So one more thing we wanted to talk with you about is I saw that you are teaching a series on why church matters. And I think for moms, that's an important thing for us to talk about. So important. Of why Mm -hmm. church matters. And especially in this season, I'm kind of curious of what led your heart um, to teach that series. And I, I'm seeing, you know, as people kind of withdrew from the church during the pandemic and, you know, Mm -hmm. we kind of had to isolate People created new rhythms, they created Mm -hmm. new habits, and we're seeing this struggle to get people back in the doors. And they're, because now they're going to hang out somewhere on a Sunday morning, they're Mm -hmm. having brunch, they've changed their Mm -hmm. habits. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we know the long-term outcome of, of not investing time in church. And anyway, so I was curious, what, what led you to teach that series and why does church matter? Yeah. Uh, I think now what, what it started with was some kind of Gen Zers that I got to spend some time with and their apathy toward church. Like they seem to have a really passionate love for Jesus, but not for church. Mm -hmm. And so I kept hearing all of these, I mean, I love God, but, or I love Jesus, but you know, I kind of have my time with myself, me and the Lord, we don't need, I don't need church to know Jesus. And I was like, this is true. However, you know, if you, if you love Jesus and He's the head of the body. The body is the church. The body is not you individually. Mm -hmm. The body that he's the head of is the church. And so I think it originally came out of learning how disenfranchised people, many people were with the church. Um, It started off with Gen Z years who just felt like the church was irrelevant and inconsistent morally. And then I thought about, and then a lot of millennials were just like, the church is too silent. There's big issues they need to be speaking out on. Uh, Gen Xers, my age were, were leaving church too. And they'd been in church their whole life. And they're like, it don't work. It just suck the life out of you and they don't care for you. And, you know, so everybody had across the generations, all these reasons. And um, so it just kind of stirred a passion. And now that I've started teaching on it, more and more people are coming out of the woodwork saying, I don't think I've really thought about this. And the other issue was when they would ask Christians why I should go to church, all they had was you know, don't forsake the gathering of the assembly. I was like, y'all, right. there's more than that command in Hebrew, you know? So um, going through the book of Acts has been really good. And even last night we talked about, I'm going to pull it up so I can read it. We talked about Acts chapter two and tongues and Pentecost and it was all juicy. It was good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when I started teaching, I, the people were like, oh Lord, what's she about to say? Because uh, our church is non-denominational and I would say tends to err on the side of conservative when it comes to the outward expression of certain gifts. Okay. So they were probably like, I was like, it's fine. It's fine. It's in the Bible. We're going to talk about it. Yeah. And good. so um, I will say the end of Acts chapter two, I told them was though like a really great summary of church. And at the end of all of this, which is the point of the gifts and outpouring the Holy Spirit and all that good stuff. At the very end of chapter two, it says, uh, after everybody got saved and came to the Lord, all that good stuff. Oh, in verse 43, it says, everyone kept feeling a sense of awe and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles and all those who believed who were together and had all things in common. Number one, Mm -hmm. they began selling their possession and their properties and sharing with those who might have a need. So they chose generosity over greed. Day by day, continuing with one mind, they were unified in the temple, the father's house, Breaking bread from house to house, real deep community, because this was communion and actual mealtime, taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God, and then says, having favor with all the people and the Lord was adding to their number day by day. It is like a charter of what church should be, those last few verses. Community, being in the father's house. And, And so we talked about why this is important for moms and anybody else. 
you can't alter your rhythm because if Jesus is the head and you're the body, you don't get to self-detach. You don't get to self-detach. And yes, you don't need church for salvation. Yeah. You don't need church to have a relationship with Jesus, but he is the head of the church. So even, even when men, mankind has executed poorly, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't supersede the fact that Jesus established the church. So find a healthy church or contribute to your church being more healthy, but you don't get to uh, deselect the idea of church just because men have done it poorly or because you don't understand the role of it. Jesus is the head. And if you love Jesus, you're going to be a part of whatever he's authored. And that is church. Number two, this idea of being in the temple in the father's house, you, you know, you, you might not live at your parents' house anymore, but there's something special about when the mm. family comes back together. Yes. And, and some of us have houses that are bigger than our parents' house and you don't care. You cram back in that house in that small kitchen around that table, because we all have something in common, right? I might not be here every single day, but there's a sweetness that comes because my sister knows what I mean when I give that look, when mom and dad do that thing. And yeah. so- there's something that happens with family and we're a family. And sometimes you're recharged when you're with family. Sometimes you get to learn that somebody in your family is going through something. There's a value with the family meeting at the father's house on a regular basis. Yeah. And then there's community, breaking the bread, communion, remembering Jesus and the, the his death, burial and resurrection and fellowshipping with others. And so when people say, I don't need church, I'm like, cool, you don't need the building, but or just show me how you're in community, breaking bread praising God, gathering with the family, giving, choosing generosity over greed, taking communion and sharing meals together, praising God. And people are growing in Christ and people are coming to salvation because that's mm. the point of the church. Mm. So if you're doing all those things, good for you. Yeah. But you're probably not. You're probably not. <laughs> you're and probably you're, not. you're missing out. You're, you're missing, missing out. out on so much. It's like, I don't know this off the top of my head. I wish oh, I would have had let's more get ready. time to think about this. What is but it? It's like it's like you taste a chocolate chip and you're like, mmm, that's good. But someone else is eating a brownie and you're like, well, we put all these ingredients together and actually this yeah. far surpasses what you're having and you don't even yep. know because you're you settling know. for that little morsel, chocolate chip morsel, mm-hmm. semi-sweet toll house. Gross. Uh-huh. Come over <laughs> here. We're putting all these ingredients get together. the real thing, yeah. See? Yeah, but I I think you people can check out easily for what they were never truly engaged in. Yes. So because our attendance was shallow, mm-hmm. it was driven by some type of obligation or somebody asked us to volunteer or it just was the right thing to do. You know, somebody told us it was right. We didn't know why we were doing it, which is why it was easy to stop doing it. Mm-hmm. And so for even for believers that that currently go to church, do they know why? Do you know why? It's not just a routine. Like this is how Ephesians says that the church is the revelation of the mystery of Jesus. It's mm-hmm, the right. glory of God. Like, and you can have those things individually, but so many things that are laid out in Ephesians, they look like singular promises, but they are for the church. It is the church that will be the glory of God. And so it is through the church that, that God brings these a movements of salvation and this outpouring of his spirit. And so I just think that as a believer, if you feel like it's as critical as your meal and your breath and your food, whether you're a mom, whether you're Gen Z, Gen X, whatever, like is not optional, mm. then you'll say, God, how, how does this work in my life? Because you're my father mm. and I want to be at your table regularly and not just for myself, but because that's how we bear one another's burdens. That's how family works. And so there, I just feel like we should feel compelled and it's not about the doors and the walls. People say, I don't have to go to the building. You don't do that. Fine. Fine. Yeah. You need to be in some community of faith, though, that's doing all these other things. And so I just think um, making sure that it's that it doesn't feel optional. Anything that does not feel optional, we find space for. Yes. Oh, that's not optional. It's not optional if our kids eat. It's not optional if our kids eat. And so, you know what happens when the day gets behind us? Sometimes sometimes we're eating in the car and we're cutting up stuff in the backseat of the car and doing all kind of crazy stuff because it's not optional if our kids eat. That's right. We must Gosh, eat. That's good. Right. So when something's not optional, you find a way. That's good. That's good. And I think there's a there's a widowed mom on the other end of this or a single mom or a mom who her husband is not into church and she's the one she has to get all those kids up and dress on Sunday mm-hmm. morning and she walks into church alone and she might be weary of going mm-hmm. and doing it and, and wondering, does this matter that I'm mm-hmm. getting these kids up and getting to church and I don't have the support I need. And I think what you just said is so key that mm-hmm. we make room when it's not optional. And so we have to solidify in our minds as believing mamas, this is not optional. Church is not optional. 
We're Mm going to go. And God will give me the strength I need. If he has called me to do it, he will give me the strength to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And keep in mind, Galatians 6, don't be weary in doing well, because at the right time, at the proper time, you're going to reap your reward. And not just for yourself. It could be five years, 10 years down the line where your kids look back and this that you're pouring into them changes the trajectory of their lives. And so there's just so much value in pressing through. And sometimes it's a marathon by, by noon or one on Sunday. You're like, my God, how about why are we so Not tired on Sunday after church? We just all oh need a nap. Gosh. We all need a nap. We, just, we all need a nap. And so you're just like, oh my Lord, to get to church today. Um, but it's worth it. It is so worth it um, for so many reasons, but above all, because that is how we really show that we're here to glorify Christ and we trust him with the rest. I love Amen. It. Jada, you've been such a joy today to be with. I want you to know we are praying for you. We are excited about the mom event in October. We can't wait to hear what the Lord has Yay. to share with us through you. You are a gem. I mean, I just, I want to have coffee with you. You're so relatable. Everything you said, just <laughs> wonderful. So tell our moms if they want to connect with you and kind of find out more about you and your ministry, where can they go to find you? Well, uh, all the social things. And so jadaedwards.com is my website. I'm on Instagram. And I know I've arrived because there's fake pages out there. I mean, <gasps> oh, I think I saw them because I saw a couple pages what? with your name and I was like, is that her? It's not. Yeah, it's what everybody aims for is to, to have a fake page. And so uh, it's Jada underscore Edwards. And so you'll know because it probably has the most amount of posts and it'll have the most recent stuff. And you can look through the stories and all that stuff. But Jada underscore Edwards on Instagram. And I have a Jada Edwards page on Facebook where I post kind of some longer things sometimes. And so between the website, Instagram and Facebook, that will probably be enough Jada. Oh, and I have a lot of stuff out there on YouTube. I do. So. Oh, good. That's good. Well, we will post all of that um, in our show notes. And as we share about this episode on our social and just like Rebecca said, we are praying for you. Mm -hmm. We are expectant and excited. And we know that our moms are just going to be as crazy about you as we are. For sure. Thank you guys for having me. So fun. Thank you. Do you know a mom who needs support and encouragement? Send her the link to the Gather Moms podcast today and connect her to this community. You can also help other moms find this podcast by leaving a rating and review. 